challenges of long-term weight loss and how to overcome. Uh, I will not repeat that the evidence base for the benefits of weight loss and maintenance is substantial. Everybody is aware about that. And why we are concerned about this, the weight loss and the weight maintenance, that is also quite clear to us. We want to improve the health of liver, muscle, adipose tissue, pancreas, kidney, dyslipidemia, and CVD. So there is a multi-organ therapeutic effects of the weight loss. And why physicians? Physicians are in a unique position to educate their patients about the challenges of weight maintenance and the positive residual effect of weight loss and to emphasize the need to maintain weight loss over the long term. But the uh, question again comes whether the physicians could be a role model or not. It depends. Suppose I am a very obese doctor and I am uh, preaching someone to weight loss and to maintain, it is not going to work at all. Uh, what, is the what are the challenges? You see here, there, this graph itself tells you substantial weight loss is possible across a range of treatment modalities, but long term sustenance of weight loss is much more challenging. And if you go for a meta-analysis of 29 long-term weight loss studies, they say more than half of the lost weight was regained within two years. And by five years, more than 80% of lost weight was regained. So this is what we are facing. And what is the definition of the weight loss maintenance? It could vary, but remember, just see here, maintaining the new weight, if you maintain the new weight for two years after weight loss, or gaining no more than 2.27 kg or 5% of the weight after weight loss, that is four years, and maintaining weight loss of 5 to 10%, that is okay, and remaining within 2.27 kg of goal weight, and weight change of less than 3% of a designated weight, body weight under standardized conditions, so this is how they have defined. And what is happening? This is very interesting. <coughs> the research has found that the levels of leptin, the hormone produced by the body fat that singles your satiety, change the, changes with the weight loss. The 13% if you lose your weight at 10 weeks, that led to 64% reduction in leptin levels. And even with some weight regain, when weight loss was down to 8% at 62 weeks, the leptin level was still reduced by 35%. So when the leptin levels falls, Energy is conserved via reduction in the resting energy expenditure and body acts as, it, as if it is in a starvation mode. So this is a big problem you see here that in increase in subjective appetite that increases with weight loss. So you lose weight, your appetite is increasing. So patients with weight loss is a double whammy that they have changes both in appetite regulation and energy expenditure and that favors weight regain and this is a very, very important issue if you want to maintain your weight. So let us see what are the challenges you are facing. So I told you that approximately 20% of those who obtain weight loss maintain it for one year or longer. And many terminate weight loss efforts, efforts in an early phase and weight regain is frequent. This means that long-term maintenance of weight loss by a life a style changes is possible but difficult. And even with the best lifestyle interventions that are associated with weight regain, usually beginning after one year. So one year is very, very crucial. And adding physical activity produces more weight loss than diet alone, uh, everybody knows. So there is, what are the factors? There are some sources of tension. You have got the old habits, your impulse age, then you manage the, those tensions, thought and beliefs about the weight management, the tension of maintenance, modifiers of the tension, and there are many unmet needs. So there are many things which are going at the same time. And so this is a National Weight Control Registry, which found that the particip participants with larger initial weight loss, remember, participants with larger initial weight loss have been most successful in long term. And successful participants regained more rapidly, but regained very little after five years. And heavier participants followed the same pattern. 
and maintaining weight loss for two years or longer was associated with maintaining larger weight loss at five and ten years. So initial behavior changes correlated with outcomes one to nine years later. So this the study has shown a very, very important message. So successful weight loss, those who lost the weight and maintained, that was associated with a range of factors and mostly with high levels of physical activity, low calorie was there and fat intake, high levels of restraint, low levels of distribution, and self-monitoring. And one paper showed that successful weight loss maintains Maintainers settle into a new profile of behavior, attitudes and psychological profiles. So let us see this a very important study which appeared in 2021. This study shows that there is association between the participants' behavior and the number of weight loss attempts. So behavior is very, very important, your psychological behavior. And also this is interesting that there was a significant relationship between weight loss attempts and hereditary factor. So this is also came from this study, and there was significant relation between psychological factors and number of weight loss attempts. attempts. So this is again very important that participants who were taking a special medications for weight loss had more successful weight loss attempts. So weight, med, role of medications here. So this concluded that the psychological factors were the most important factors on repeating the weight loss attempts followed by the behavior related factors and practices related to self-control, mental control, stress reduction, and behavior modification should be considered at any weight loss management program. Body weight loss programs need a strike follow up by the dietitian in order to avoid the fluctuations in the body weight. So this is again a very important point. Now I will say why it is so difficult to lose weight and keep it off. Because the, our environment is so oxygenic, you know, that the long-term weight management is extremely challenging due to the interactions which you are getting every day, your biology, your behavior, this environment, and psychological factors I told about and I mentioned there. And the source of weight loss is accompanied by persistent, also endocrine adaptations that increase your appetite, I told you, and decrease satiety, thereby restrict, resisting continued weight loss and conspiring against the long-term weight management, this is a very, very important issue which we need to deal. So the potential rise in the calorie intake from its initially reduced value is the primary factor that halts weight loss within the first year. I think this point is quite clear. You have lost your calorie, and this is a primary factor that there is, whatever you have reduced initially, there is exponential rise in the calorie intake later on. So this becomes a very, very important. So you can see here in this graph that in contrast to the modest drop in the calorie expenditure of less than 200 kilocalorie per day at the weight plateau, appetite has increased by 400 to 600 kilocalorie per day. It is very difficult to challenge this one. So patients' perceptions of ongoing diet maintenance despite no further weight loss may arise because the physiological regulation of appetite occurs in brain regions that operate below the patient's conscious awareness. So these signals are very, very important. So a relatively persistent effort is required to avoid the overeating to match the increased appetite that grows in proportion to the weight loss. I already showed you, but I will repeat it, that it has been estimated that for each kilogram of lost weight, the calorie expenditure decreases by about 20 to 30 kilocalorie per day, whereas appetite increases by about 100 kilocalorie per day above the baseline level before the weight loss. So, so how weight regain versus maintenance, if you go, prevention of weight regain requires about 300 to 500 kilocalorie of increased persistent effort to counter the ongoing slowing of metabolism, you know, and there are likely many factors that account and unveiling the biological, psychological, educational, environmental determinants of such individual variability will be an active area of obesity research. Whereas long-term diet trails, now what about the diet trails? They have not resulted in clear superiority of one diet over another with respect to average weight loss. This diet, those, those diet, your traditional diet, low calorie diet, high low-fat diet, high-protein diet, ultimately 
some of this variability may be due to interaction between diet type and patient genetics or baseline physiology such as insulin sensitivity. Unfortunately, the diet biology interactions for weight loss have not always been reproducible and likely explain only a fraction of the individual variability. So this is the, these are the challenges. Now let us see whether this can be overcome or at not at all. So this is the conceptual model of the dynamics of weight loss maintenance, time pressure, family, friends, seasons, social occasions, neighborhood, food availability, life events, many things are working in your life. The most important point is that the long-term benefits requires long-term attention. Graph itself shows this study. Weight loss inter intervention should include long-term comprehensive weight loss maintenance program that continued at least for one year. So then you have the role of the drugs, physical activity, low calorie diet, eating breakfast regularly, self-confidence, satisfaction, health concern, low level of depression. But here many traits are there, the therapeutic alliance and so many things are there. So ultimately, frequent self-monitoring and self-weighing, reduced calorie intake, a smaller and more frequent meals and snacks, Throughout the day, increase your physical activity, consistently eating breakfast, more frequent at home meals compared with the restaurants and fast food meals, reducing screen time, you know everyone knows that, and use of portion control meals to meal substitutes. So these are the things of the exercise, diet, and the behavior. But still there are many problems comes. Strengthen satisfaction with the outcomes, replace, relapse, prevention training, this is important, relax, prevention training is needed. And the cognitive restructuring is needed. And developing cognitive flexibility is needed and appeal to patients, deeper motivations needed. So manage also the expectations of your patients and the providers. This is again very, very important point. And with, you must escalate treatment as needed. Like, you should consider referral to a registered dietitian like Dr. Poonam is here, obesity medicine physicians, or comprehensive weight management clinic. It is not always the domain of the physician. And for patients, suppose a BMI is greater than 30, uh, then the obesity pharmacotherapy is needed. And for patients with BMI greater than 40, bariatric surgery is the well-studied and available option to have to consider when to escalate your treatment and how to explaining the weight plateau of not going details, but motivating by, suppose patient is regaining weight again and again, after doing all these things, you must motivate also that even by losing whatever the weight you have lost, there is some other effects will be coming like preventing the type two, future type two diabetes, shown by the DP4 study, and even from the look study, look ahead study, you can see that the participants who maintained their weight loss after four years, reported more favorable physical activity and food intake and attended more treatment sessions than those who had not maintained their weight loss, indicating that the importance of a sustained lifestyle change in successful weight loss maintainers. So this is quite important. So my point is that the lifestyle intervention continues to be critically important for achieving treatment goals. And then you have many newer tools and the role of the primary care providers like several effective and well-tolerated pharmacotherapies are there today. And the new treatment options have enabled the, the development of more robust approaches to the medical care. Like we have got now available the semaglutide tablet. And this step trials one to five, they have provided data on the efficacy and safety of a new treatment of semaglutide, which is anticipated to provide clinically meaningful and the durable weight loss beyond what is currently achievable with the available agents for the obesity. So this is one point which should be, this will also have shown this step one to step five trials that the reduce, this semaglutide reduces the future risk of diabetes by over 60% in patients with the obesity. This figure is similar what whether a patient has pre-diabetes or normal blood sugar levels. Also, this drug is doing wonder. The trigepatide type, you are well aware that a 15 milligram daily dose leads to a 20% of total body loss 
a skull that is only possible through the surgery. So these things you can do. So what works? Some clinical trials and commercial weight loss programs have shown that the meal replacements are highly effective in producing significant sustainable weight loss. But other studies have found that behavioral changes involving diet, like you are taking more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, the self-monitoring of caloric intake, self-weighing, planning meals in advance, and moderate intensity physical activity are important factors in maintaining a reduced body weight over the long term. And there should be a stage approach to the weight management, including the monitoring weight fluctuations and having a clear signal for a weight regain that triggers immediate action is also a common characteristic of successful weight maintainers. Like the physical activity, I say my patients, make your mitochondria green. And research is showing a person, what it looks like the mitochondria of sedentary and exercise trend becomes green. So this is how you can motivate your patients. And if you see in our Vedic Sahitya, there are lots of things which we can adopt also. You can see here, some of the quotes here about even the intermittent fastings and the dietary interventions. And meta-analysis of long-term studies have suggested that the low-fat weight loss diets are slightly inferior to low-carbohydrate diets, but the average difference between the diets is too small to be clinically significant. So I won't go in details of those different type of diets. This is just this, if you go for the average difference that is clinically uh, very uh, not much, much significant. So equivalence does not necessarily imply that a calorie is a calorie, remember, when it comes to diets, but different macronutrients proportion differently impacting weight loss. You can see here that altering the diet macronutrients, manipulation of diet composition can result in differences in the endocrine status, and any change in the body overall energy stores must be accompanied by changes in calorie index or expenditure. So, it is theoretically possible that a particular diet could result in an advantageous endocrine or metabolic state that promotes weight loss. So in recent years, there has been the re-emergence of low carbohydrate, high fat diet as popular weight loss interventions. I will not go in details of those, uh, but uh, long-term success with a weight loss diet may have less to do with the biology that factors such as patient's food environment and socioeconomic medical comorbidity and social supports. You can see here this is very important, you must have seen this, how we can uh, check signals by just giving 1400 calories of vegetables. So here the stress receptor, role of stress receptors and satiety signals are quite clear. And Dr. Narsing Barma is the either the father of, I'd say, of the chronomedicine. So apply chrono nutrition to lose weight to maintain, this is also some studies are showing. And bariatric surgery is the most effective method for the treatment of Several of obesity, you will see the details of how and when to suggest about the bariatric surgery. And still there will be a vast unexplored world in this field of weight loss and weight maintenance. Uh, people's li <coughs> life experiences can give you rich, rich examples to, do, to help understand long-term weight loss in concrete ways. So this way, uh, what is it like for people with severe obesity to lose weight and keep it off for the long term uh, you can get from the very life experiences. So this is a never ending story, losing and keeping weight off. So concluding my talk, this is a new self, the old self, and the image that presented itself in the mirror, there is some sort of message in that. So final points are that the all guidelines agree that obesity is a chronic disease that requires long term management. The goal of obesity treatment is to improve the health of the patient. It is not intended for the cosmetic purpose. The counter corner store of the therapy is comprehensive lifestyle intervention from informed health care professionals. An initial goal of therapy is weight loss of 5 to 10 percent, and consideration should be given to use of a weight loss medication or a possible bariatric surgery as in addition to these treatment modalities. So lastly, the weight maintenance with lifestyle modification, although challenging, is possible, but requires long-term support to reinforce diet, physical activity, and behavioral changes. And addition of pharmacotherapy to lifestyle interventions promotes greater and more sustained weight loss. And the degree of weight loss and its maintenance should be the sole metric of obesity treatment success. So biological, behavioral, and environmental factors conspire to resist weight loss 
and promote regain so the realistic long term weight loss may achieved is significantly lower than patients and healthcare providers expectations so however even a small amounts of sustained weight loss lead to clinical health improvements and risk factor reductions thank you very much